everyone, Mike Linares here, and welcome to the Code Blue podcast brought to you by Holly Blue, the first one and only social media app created by nurses, specifically for nurses. So think of this as a community made just for you. You guys can download the app and connect with nurses in your area and also boost your knowledge and career. We'll be talking today about the uh, NCLEX failures and some horror stories for NCLEX. Everyone's favorite subject, the NCLEX. Yes, the NCLEX. So yeah, they, they just changed it for COVID actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and Canada just changed up their stuff, you were telling me. Yeah, so actually coming down from Canada, I was the second group to write the NCLEX. They passed it in January 2015. We had just started writing it. I was the oh, second yeah. group. People were protesting and rioting. I remember these uh, petitions to get the NCLEX gone. People were so upset. <laughs> and we were told it's part of the NAFTA agreement. We have to do it. And I'm so thankful that I did because I ended up having to write the NCLEX to work down here. And the amazing thing for Canadians is if you write the Canadian NCLEX, uh-huh. you don't have to write the American one because it's all It's the all same. the same. Oh, nice. So you have to do it anyway. So it's actually a great thing, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the NCLEX is not as scary as it once was. There's so many great tools and resources yeah. out there available now, too. Uh, simple Nursing is one of them. I don't know oh, if you've heard of them. get out of here. Yeah, I don't know about Simple Nursing, but that guy's really cute. So <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, Simple Nursing, guys, uh, that's where I started. If you guys don't know about it yet, um, or maybe you're watching this on our YouTube channel. But we have a bunch of YouTube videos for nursing um, and created by nursing. So it was funny because um, Brandon actually uh, does a blog um, for nurses, and he was saying like a lot of his uh, subscribers actually say, "Oh yeah, you simple nursing and heard about him." So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. We're each other's biggest fans here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, big huge fans. <laughs> um, Mike, did you have a story about an NCLEX failure? Yeah, but it, it wasn't as scary as yours. Like you said, when Canada first initiated the our NCLEX from the U.S., it was fifty percent failure rate. So in Eastern Canada, it was a fifty percent failure rate <laughs> oh in the Maritimes. God. People were losing it, and at that time too, you could only write the NCLEX three times. I could not oh. tell you how many people I knew that had written the exam twice. They're facing the exam for the third time, not knowing if they pass Dang. the exam, they get to work as a nurse. And if they don't, they're looking at an entirely new career. Can yeah, you imagine? So, so imagine yeah, going through all of nursing school, because over in the States, it's like two years, but you have to do your prerequisites. So it's like three years mixed in, maybe mm-hmm. three and a half, uh, compared to four years like straight through in Canada. But imagine you go through four years, and then you fail. You just can't pass this NCLEX, whether it's test anxiety whether it's lopsided studying or you just don't have the tactics. I had so much anxiety. <laughs> Dude, I had, I had a lot of anxiety I, too. <laughs> no one warned me that you would have to scan your, did you have, they, they scan your palms going into that building? Palms, no. Yeah. We had to do life scan where they did our fingerprints. But no. They scanned my palms, they took everything away. I'm, I'm a man <laughs> they stripped who, you I need my Blistex oh. with me. Like that's, that's, uh, that's <laughs> the one thing that the I nervous need. twitch? They took my Blistex away. I'm like, this is not gonna be a good start. Oh man. And uh, I ended up writing, it was 75 questions. Okay. And everyone at the hospital, they, everyone always asked, how many questions write? Did you write yeah, how many yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, if I tell everyone that I wrote 75 and I fail this, like, they're, see you later. Like, yeah, that's yeah. it. But, um, but it's, you know what, it's gotten so much better. They've really filtered out uh, a lot of questions that weren't testing well, and they've made it so they're really trying to give nurses an opportunity to pass the exam now, which is fantastic. Yeah. How many questions did you write for your Oh, man. Okay, so here's my horror story. We're going to do NCLEX horror stories, and then we'll talk about some helpful tips and tricks mm-hmm. that you guys can use um, for your NCLEX if you're taking it. But I took mine, um, so here's the deal. I graduated my last semester in nursing school. I used to be a paramedic instructor before nursing. So I used to teach EKG and stuff. Mm -hmm. So six months before I graduated, I started uh, Simple Nursing by just showing people what I would do to study for nursing. Yeah. So 1,200 videos later, um, it was like nine months later, and I still hadn't taken my NCLEX. It was literally, I took my NCLEX a year and a half after I graduated nursing school. And the reason for that was not because I was dragging my feet, was because I was lazy. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's because <laughs> it's because my school counselor, apparently in the States, you have to have an associate's degree at least or some type of degree to take your NCLEX. Mm-hmm. Now there are some like uh, diploma degrees out there that are but they're being phased out. Mm-hmm. But anyways, like my great counselor at this college was like, Hey, everything's set, you're good to go, you're gonna graduate in like five, six weeks or whatever it was. And then like two weeks or three weeks before the graduation, she's like, You have to take ch- take a um uh, what's it called? Child development class. And we're like, what? What is this? So everyone took a child de- development class that's like a prerequisite somehow or it's mixed in somewhere. I'm mm-hmm. like, what? So then I, all, I, I got to walk with my classmates, but everyone else was taking the NCLEX. And the only other school that offered it was like some random school like 20 miles away 
but they didn't offer it in the springtime, so I had to wait a whole semester. Oh, so it was like a whole year and a half. And mind you, people on YouTube are like just tearing me to shreds on these blogs on allnurses.com saying this is like 2014 or yep. they're like, oh, yeah, this guy on YouTube's not even a nurse. And he's teaching other nursing students how to be nurses. And I'm like, oh, no. So anyways, long story short, by the time I actually take the NCLEX, um, I'm sweating because I'm like, dude, I just made 1,200 videos for nursing students if I don't pass it. <laughs> well, and tell me too. So you probably saw a million people on Instagram and Facebook that were like, just passed the NCLEX, got my results in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're still waiting. You're like, yeah. I haven't read it yet. Like this is. But it's funny because people are using my videos to pass it. And then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> imagine if I don't pass it. That would be a tough look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's like, oh, no, no, you're going to be great. Come on. You guys, you know, you're the one who teaches everyone. Yep. So I'm like, oh, well. So what I did was I used just like everyone, but this is eight years ago. I used Saunders, the Saunders book. Um, we just had it, actually. It's over here. Uh, the purple book. That was a sixth edition. I used um, Saunders, too. Did you really? Love it. Love it. Saunders nice. isn't paying us, but that was a great Yeah, yeah. Plug it in. Great book. Yeah. Great book. No, yeah. Really good book. Now everyone's using, like, the big top. Um, simple nursing. Question bank out there. Oh, yeah. Simple nursing. Oh, I got it. But anyway, so I go and I use like three different resources. The average student actually uses about five different resources. So I just take a bunch of questions. I don't really even know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, but then anyways, I go and take the, uh, the exam. And I'm just like trying to get out of my mind because I always tell students, don't focus on the 75 questions. Yeah. Don't focus on passing. Focus on prepping. Mm -hmm. Focus on every question like it's going to be the last one. Don't. Mm -hmm. Try to get in your own mind and, you know, block your own shot. So then, like, 75 questions pass, and I'm like, oh, crap. So I take a break at, like, 100 questions. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I have to go through, like, the, the uh, you know, the armed guards. and I'll come back another yeah. nine months and finish this exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, four and a half, almost five hours later, it takes me all the way to 265 questions. Oh, I'd be sweating buckets. I know. <laughs> but it's funny because I always tell students, like, Take your time, take 60 questions at a time. Every 60 questions, that'll be like your lap. Take a little break, take a little like mind break, mm -hmm. uh, and then get back to it. Because the worst thing you want to do is just get yourself fatigued, get your in your own mind and just block your own shot. Mm -hmm. So I thought for sure I failed because it was like four and a half hours, almost five hours later, and I was really fatigued. But um, apparently, apparently, if they take you all the way to the end, it doesn't mean you failed, or it doesn't mean that you are on the borderline failing. Sometimes it means they take 10% or 20% of the, uh, the student batch, mm -hmm. and then they actually um, use it as quality control. Mm -hmm. So they'll make you finish the entire thing at, just because they want to. Not mm -hmm. because You could have passed at 75, so mm -hmm. that's what I like to believe, but I don't know. Well, and even then, too, so if you write the 265 questions, yeah. I believe that they only take the last portion of the questions as... Yeah, you know the the uh, the grading point, I guess, if you will, to see if you hovered above the pass mark or mm -hmm. below that mark too. So if you feel like you haven't done great at the beginning of the test, yeah, have no fear because it's really how you finish. You yeah, we talked about that last time. What's more important, the start it's of true. the finish? Yeah, yeah, you got You got to finish strong. Yeah. The the coolest part is I always find, you know, if you guys are taking your NCLEX and you think that oh, if your um, if your NCLEX lasts past seventy five questions, mm -hmm. it might not be a bad thing. Because you're still sticking around, mm -hmm. and the more you get right, and the more you hang around, um, it's better. Mm -hmm. e even if you finish all the questions, if you finish strong, that's how you usually pass. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And the NCLEX, like I said, it's gotten a lot better. The yeah. resources to prepare have gotten a lot better. I think for me, a lot of the anxiety come, came from, it was such an unknown at the time. It was so new to us. But with yeah. all the resources out, the, the passing rates are climbing. They and are. Not 50% anymore? That's not 50% <laughs> anymore. No. Nope. Uh, and people are doing great, you know. And so I'm really excited about it. And the whole idea of this podcast right here is to, again, hopefully alleviate a lot of anxiety for people and offer some really good tips and advice on how yeah. to best prepare for the NCLEX yeah. and move forward too. So, oh, I can talk all day about this. Yeah. So buckle up. We're in for three-hour Three hour NCLEX review here. No, I'm just mm. kidding. <laughs> Wait, so were you going to talk about your NCLEX uh, debacle or? So mine, mine yeah, I, yeah. I finished in 75 questions. Get out of here, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> I was like, I need that Blistex. Get that back to me. <laughs> no, uh, no, it was about 75 questions. I had a lot on, um, it was uh, infection control was mine. Really? Yeah. And so the exam hmm. started with just regular multiple choice questions. Okay. And then it moved to select all that apply. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's hard to walk out of an exam feeling good. Oh, not at all, all yeah. Um, but it stopped at that too. So yeah. 
I was I was so worried. I was like, oh, I don't feel good about this exam. But everyone says too, if the questions get harder and they stay mm-hmm. at that uh, at that group, if you go from multiple choice to select level five and it finishes like that, mm-hmm. you've probably done quite well because if you get a question right, the next one gets harder. And if you get a question wrong, the yeah. next one gets easier too. So the fact that you're staying in a more difficult group of questions is a pretty good indicator that things are going well. Yeah, yeah. That, I, mean, I, I tell students this all the time. If it keeps on getting harder, then it's okay. Mm-hmm. But the hard part is that if you're not getting a lot of select all that apply, it could mean two different things. So every two years, um, the NCLEX switches up just 5%. One of the biggest pushes, the last change, or maybe two changes ago, was 70% of the exam was select all that apply. Oh, wow. 50 to 70. And then now that they're, they're diluting that a lot now, mm-hmm. so it's only 30 now, I think. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, the more select all that apply that you get, it's, it's going to be mm-hmm. good for you. Mm-hmm. So it's not always a bad thing. So let's first talk about... Mm-hmm. Resources. 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 So another simple nursing plug. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I think one of the best things to do is actually supplement your learning and yes. having different sources too. So I think one of the first things to do is purchase a really good NCLEX study yeah. book or material. So something like the Saunders book, I found insanely helpful. Yeah. And then supplementing that with an online uh, educational resource like yeah. simple nursing. Yeah, and, yeah. And getting a different style of, of questions to practice with too. Oh man, yeah. So. Okay, so apparently there's two tracks, trains of thought here. There's a bunch of questions Mm -hmm. or there's just a bunch of content and they just cram a bunch of content. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend students like do like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like push it together. So I always recommend the the really good rule of thumb is find a really solid question bank and try to get at least above a 60%. Mm -hmm. 1,200 questions, 60% or higher. That's how you know you're about 90% chance at at passing. Mm -hmm. Now, I always tell students, hey, 70% or higher at, you know, more than 1200 questions, you're, you're Gucci, like you're, you're gold almost. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, is finding the content side. So that's where simple nursing comes in really helpful. And so does Saunders book. Saunders Mm -hmm. book's great too. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the question banks, they'll kind of leave you out to dry. They'll give you bits and pieces of information and have some good rationales. But if you just need like an entirely enveloped, like, um, kind of content resource, Mm -hmm. simple nursing, we have like 1200 videos. The cool thing is about two years ago, we started sourcing 10,000 NCLEX questions. Wow. So we basically, would we were like this. We saw a bunch of videos on YouTube about NCLEX stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, about cardiac enzymes, for example. Mm -hmm. Do you really need a 15-minute video on cardiac enzymes? So we hired three PhD instructors, tore apart the top five question banks, and out of 10,000 questions, we're like, how many questions came up on cardiac enzymes? Mm -hmm. And only one. It was just troponin. No CPK, no CKMB, yep. no California Pizza Kitchen, no. No, yeah. no, no nothing. And then so that's when we started really focusing and really drilling down on mm-hmm. what do students really need to know and how can we get them to know it and with memory tricks. Well, you guys have done a fantastic job. I think there's over 99% pass rate. Is yeah, that, yeah. Is that good? 90, I believe we're hovering between 96 and 99. Yes. It really just depends on, yeah. the, uh, on the semester. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, the way that we switched up the videos and added the animation as well as the memory tricks, mm-hmm. we're getting a lot of like, um, what's it called? Basically like a big upswing right now. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool. Like, it's really awesome just to see how the space is evolving. I mean, four or five years ago, it was just Kaplan was number one. Mm-hmm. And now there's a bunch of other resources now. So it's really awesome. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's the best thing. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. And so obviously Mike has simple nursing. I actually wrote NCLEX practice questions for a publisher in Canada too. So we both have a pretty good grasp on the inside tips and tricks. I would say after purchasing your study material is actually making a study schedule and giving yourself an adequate amount of time to prepare. For myself, I took about eight weeks. I recommend six to eight weeks. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I gave myself the last week of of a buffer schedule too. So if I had a sick day, if I needed a time where I had to step away and be with family or friends, yeah. or I had to focus a little bit more on some study material that I didn't feel great about earlier on. I had those three to five extra days to really um, to use it like that too. So, so you would study every single day for about six M- weeks? Monday to Friday. Okay, okay. And I would study from probably about eight in the morning till six or seven p.m. Okay. I would make break times. It's like a too. normal job. Okay. A yeah. normal job. Yep. Yeah. And I would make sure that I still had time with my family and friends on the weekends. I think that's so important. You have to take a yeah. holistic approach. You do that. not want to burn out. It's a marathon. It is a marathon. Yeah. It is a marathon. And, uh, and, but having those buffer days is so important. There's yeah. a lot of stories I read online when I was preparing for this podcast 
of people who ran out of time preparing because they did get sick or oh, they really? got the flu and it took out a week or two of, of their of their schedule too. Oh, so crap. having that little bit of a buffer period, I think, is, is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you have those days and you you completed the all your all your practice material or study material, I would use that final week to just hammer down on practice questions and yeah. just keep going from there. Yeah, um, which is fantastic too. So, what are your thoughts on that? No, no, it's so true. Like I always tell students to like six to eight weeks is like a good therapeutic range. Mm -hmm. Ninety days or basically twelve weeks is kind of the maximum on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You don't want to really draw it out too much unless you've been out of school for like, you know, four or five years or, or longer. Uh, I've even helped nurses who have been out for 12 years or something or even like uh, transitioning from mm -hmm. other countries like the Philippines and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so one tip I would say, too, is it, it is great to do the exam shortly after you graduate. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes in the workplace setting. Oh, yeah. Uh, we talked a, about this. Yeah. A nursing shortage. Yeah. And with how high the demands are right now with COVID-19, not everything that you will see in the hospital setting is done to the NCLEX textbook protocol too. So by continuing to just really use that fresh knowledge that you've just gained from all of that NCLEX practice uh, question material and from reading those books mm -hmm. um, and from your university program too, use that material. Don't necessarily rely on your experience and what you're doing at the hospital because it might not actually be what the NCLEX uh, yeah. Deems as, as the correct answer. Not at all. Yeah, we were just talking about this. We're like, don't strip a chest tube. No, do not strip a chest. I was this close to stripping it a chest tube. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> there was, anyways. Uh, <laughs> have you seen that meme where like that graduation cap was like, I was this close to stripping and never mind. No. Okay, okay. I'll show you later. I'm living it though. I mean, on a cardiology <laughs> one, it's like three in the morning. You need to strip a tube. You can see the respiration rate climbing, the worker breathing climbing, and the cardiologist is. Is away sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, you're talking about that stripping. I, I was talking. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, that's, that's a whole uh, other... That's going to take place after midnight tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the night shift nurse. <laughs> yeah, that's shift change. <laughs> okay. With uh, Mike. Yeah, um, after dark. No, no. Um, What were we talking about again? I was so going to say something schedule. really. Oh, yeah, the study schedule, but something before. The, oh, NCLEX world is totally different than the actual workplace of a nurse. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I kind of liken it to uh, driver's training. Like when you actually do driver's training, no one ever drives like that. You know, you always like put your blinker on, especially in California. Stopping at stops. Yeah, stopping at stops. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's the thing is that NCLEX world is totally different. So just taking it as quick as you, well, not as quick, but um, inside that, that range mm -hmm. immediately kind of after you graduate is kind of the best way. And then again, just knowing your numbers, a lot of students don't know the 1,200 questions, 60% or higher. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend 70% or higher on a question bank. But that's how you know that you're ready. Mm -hmm. If you're not ready, if your numbers are below that, just push your date back. Like, mm -hmm. there's no shame in that. And you so. know what, too? I will say, this is a little off topic, but I actually had a few friends that didn't say their actual exam date or they, yeah, they yeah. misinformed us of when it was going to be and they wrote in secrecy well ahead of schedule. <laughs> uh. I think it was because they didn't have to um, deal with everyone asking, how did it go? How did it go? Oh, it's all the pressure, like yeah. Too. So if you are someone who is having maybe a little bit of worry about that, you don't have to tell anyone when you're writing the exam. You can you can yeah. just focus on on what you have to do and say you're going to do it later on too. So yeah, um, that's yeah. And why not? The, the hard part is getting out of your own mind. Mm -hmm. So I I think those few days off a week doing something, but just really kind of treating it as it's a six week, eight week kind of go through the fire, and once you're done, you're mm -hmm. kind of done. So um, so now this is the tip number three. It's actually knowing how to answer and collect questions oh, too because snap. there is a strategy. To answering questions there were yeah. questions where i didn't necessarily understand the material or what it was that uh maybe the medication oh or yeah the, the diagnosis yeah but by knowing how to um you know process what i would do and prioritize mm -hmm. that is what really helped yeah yeah i know like there was uh i know kaplan does uh the decision tree mm -hmm. and sometimes like i get students all the time that say their the decision tree for them was just too overwhelming but at the same time the idea is what Brandon's trying to say is that, you know, obviously go for your ABCs, mm -hmm. airway breathing, but really always ask yourself anytime you get a question like who dies first mm -hmm. or what's the worst case scenario in this mm -hmm. um, in this question. So if it's not an airway breathing circulation problem, then what's past that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is someone getting uh, infectious or uh, sorry, in getting an infection? Mm -hmm. Is someone going to fall? If someone is there going to be like a loss of a limb? Mm -hmm. So. Someone's always going to be dying or, you know, someone's always going to be getting injured. That's mm -hmm. kind of the idea. Exactly. So there's kind of four areas that I would really focus on on 
strategizing how you answer questions. So like Mike said, the ABCs, mm -hmm. if it's not an airway problem, move on to breathing. If it's not a breathing problem, move on to circulation. As well as you want to know your Maslow's hierarchy of needs as well too. Yeah. So the first thing that you would address is obviously the physiological needs and then safety, security, uh, love and belonging, um, self-esteem and self-actualization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and Maslow's always gets confusing because we always stop after, you know, ABCs. It's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. just basic needs. And then people don't understand. It's like, oh, when they get to psych questions. And then what's that process that we always talked about? Um, the nursing process. What is it? I don't know. I've heard no, of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so your nursing assessment. Oh, dude, this is huge, planning, man. Planning, yeah. intervention, and evaluation. So the first thing that you would do is the assessment. Always assess. And so if, you, if, you're, if you're in the question and you've already seen that the assessment is done, yes. then you would move on to the nursing diagnosis. And if that's done, you move on to the planning or intervention or evaluation too. So mm -hmm. um, if you recognize again that the assessment has already been completed for the situation or scenario, then you would move on down the nursing process just like you would with the ABCs and the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then like you spoke with before, client safety needs too. So yeah. re reducing hazards that risk injury Oh, dude, yeah, so falls. it's always loss of life, then loss of limb, or basically safety. Mm -hmm. So always just think safety. Uh, and kind of like what Brenda was just saying is that, you know, it doesn't nece necessarily mean that, you know, someone is always going to be dying with an ABC issue. Um, specifically for nursing process, mm -hmm. if the question gives you a bunch of assessment data and a lot of labs, always look at the labs. They're not going to give you a bunch of information that you don't need. Well, sometimes they will, but there's always one or two labs that are going to be really off. And it's usually, I don't want to quote me on this, but it's usually what's going to kill someone first. <laughs> it's like a creatinine that's over 1.3. So we always say 1.3 is bad kidney. And then another one is um, like, everyone write this down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> another one's like bleeding yeah. and someone's, yeah. So those are the, really the two. Mm -hmm. And trust me, we've done 10,000 questions and we always saw that those two mm -hmm. are usually the biggest. I'm yeah. sorry. No, tangent. if there's a theme, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like, it's gonna be something that's gonna stick in a lot of people's minds, which is fantastic too. So, um, and then knowing your seven medication rights very important. Your basic needs, like you said, so fluids, oxygen, nutrition, and then reduce the risk of transmission. So, like I said, I had a lot of questions on infection control. So it was a lot of questions that might have related to um, immunization, sanitation, uh, hand hygiene, just doing those basic things to eliminate or mitigate the risk of spreading infection. Oh, um, yeah. In my questions, anyways, that I had. Yeah, always think safety. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. And it's funny because we can always talk about this after. I don't want to go on a too big a tangent. Mm -hmm. But if you got a lot of infection stuff, I got, I started off with my weakest area, pediatrics. And the NCLEX kind of works like a Hunger Games. So there's multiple different mixtures of test questions. Mm -hmm. But they usually start you off in a topic content area. Mm -hmm. like, kind of like the Hunger Games where like, there's 12 different sectors and they just drop you off. And like, maybe the desert or the snow or something. You have to battle your way out so you can get to the next section. So you have to be really, uh, really good on your top three most weak points. Mm -hmm. So always try to focus on your weak points. That's why I always say if it's pediatrics, pharmacology, or psych, mm -hmm. focus there if that's your weak points. Um, just in case you get dropped into that, then you can battle your way out and mm -hmm. do other stuff. So. And then I would recommend, because we're talking a lot about the content mm -hmm. in the exam and how to answer questions, but alleviating anxiety leading up to the exam itself too. So oh, yeah. I've got a little list of things to do the night before an exam. Obviously, you want to focus on getting a good night's sleep. Nutrition yeah. fluids are so important. I made sure that I had snacks and water and coffee ready to go for the next day. Because the last thing you want to do is be stressing about what you're going to do the morning of and trying to find a meal and getting your coffee and all those things too. Oh, yeah. Confirm the location and the parking situation. And you don't yeah. want to run into a nightmare situation yeah, where yeah. you have to park a mile away and it's going to take you 20 minutes to run in. You might be late because if you're late, they might not let you in. Yeah. yeah. Have your government issued ID government. with you. That's how you're going to get what? let in. Yeah. Your college ID? Government? government issued ID? Yeah, I think we do. Maybe like driver's license. In Canada, bring your government issued ID. Down here, bring your <laughs> college ID. Yeah, bring your driver's license ID or government. And don't bring your government issued ID. Yeah. No, and don't bring anything that you don't need because you're not going to be able to bring it. What about ballistics? Can exam. you bring? I don't. No, they took my <laughs> ballistics away. I, I still have to write a letter. <laughs> Were they trying to search you? Because they're like, hey, no, never mind. I'm very sensitive <laughs> about my ballistics. Um, yeah, I, I want to mention one thing. If there's anything that you guys do 72 hours before your exam, number one is do something fun. Like treat yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Do something fun. Number two is the sleep. And a lot of people over uh, overrate this or underrate it. I don't know. You must go to bed. I always recommend going to bed by 9 p.m. 
Now you're probably not going to fall asleep until like 10. But Dr. Oz always says that every hour before midnight counts as double in terms of quality REM sleep. So really get your sleep. That's, that's number one for functionality of your brain. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And so I will leave people with 12 insider tips and helpful hints to help you passing the NCLEX exam. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from me who was an insider writing NCLEX prep questions for. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. A, I didn't even know about this till today. Yeah, came over for lunch over tacos. Yeah, all, tacos. All things. So these are actual tips and tricks that I had learned from being an insider, so take notes. The first thing is ask yourself what exactly is the question asking of me? Yes. Do not read into the question for more than what it is and keep it simple. Super simple. Two, don't look into any patterns. There is a possibility that you could have a number of select all that apply questions in a row with four correct answers. So yeah. don't feel that just because it's been a pattern of writing three answers in a row or four answers in a row for a while that you have to try and mix it up because the way the exam works, it might very well just be that you've had four inches in a row with four. Yeah, like answers. all can be correct. Yeah. So highlight keywords that help you to prioritize what your action yes. answer will be. So first, early, best, those are keywords that you want to highlight because that is going to help you in identifying what intervention um, that you need to, to do or yeah. another step in the nursing process as well. And some other keywords, well, Brandon just mentioned first, early, or best. Mm -hmm. And some other keywords are abrupt or sudden. Those are big keywords, like if someone's going to be like mm -hmm. deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And so recognize the absolute words as well too. So words like only, never, always, none, ever, must, cannot. It is extremely rare that an absolute exists in healthcare, so it is unlikely that it will be an answer in the end class. Not always the case, but just be mindful of this. Mm -hmm. um, number five, eliminate the answers that you are certain to be incorrect immediately in multiple choice questions. This automatically increases your odds of getting that question right from 25 to 33 or 50%. At least one answer is, is typically clearly wrong. And so just by virtue of eliminating that answer, you have a much better odd yeah. of, of actually getting the question right. Yeah, always try to narrow it down to two is the, is the idea mm -hmm. for sure. Number six, focus on answers that directly affect the client. Number seven, always read the question and answers twice to make sure you don't miss any keywords, distractors, absolutes, or action words. Number eight, rely on your memory for multiple choice questions as the style of question is more likely to be designed to test your knowledge and memory. Mm -hmm. Read the questions and attempt to recall the answer in your head before looking at the answers provided in the question itself. You should then choose the answer most similar to the one that you recalled before you begin second guessing as the answers will be designed to trick you into thinking that they could all be correct. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm a big thing on select all that applies. I always get students asking me all the time, uh, SATA questions. Um, the biggest thing is there's, we always do like a three-step um, question breakdown, which we have um, at the end of every question on our quiz bank. Um, but really, in, in a nutshell, number one, you're trying to find the key words of what the questions kind of like having you focus on. Number two, ask yourself, what is the question asking? Specifically for select all that applies, cover up the answer options. Don't even look at them. Always jog your memory by saying, uh, what do I know about this kind of diagnosis or what the question's asking? Mm -hmm. And then say, what's the worst possible outcome? So for example, if it's like hyperthyroidism, what's gonna kill the patient the fastest for hyperthyroidism? Everything's gonna be high and hot. So myxedema coma, the patient's gonna, I'm sorry, not myxedema. It's <laughs> thyroid storm is gonna kill the patient, thyroid toxicosis. So anyways, long story short, just cover up the answer options, jog your memory of what you know, and then that's when reveal it and it should be easier. Also like that you threw out a fake answer. Yeah. That could have been the real answer. So that was intentional, everyone. Uh, number 10, <laughs> when presenting with select all that apply questions, the majority of answers will likely somewhat relate to the situation or client, but you need to determine which ones directly relate to the situation or client. Number 11, most questions can be answered in two minutes or less. So do not spend an excessive period of time thinking about the question. Eliminate the answers you know are wrong. Ask yourself if the ABCs, focusing on airway first, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, focusing on the physiologic needs first, or the nursing process, focusing on the assessment first, or safety questions um, can be applied. Make an educated guess from there. If you do not know what the content is from the question that is being asked of you, you can often answer the question simply by applying those above strategies. And the yeah. final 12th tip, after you decide on an answer, reread the question and yeah. ask yourself if the answer or answers you choose are both reasonable and realistic. Yeah, yeah, the biggest thing that I always see students, they get caught up in, well, it's a few things. 
you get caught up in reading too much into the question mm-hmm. or you change your answer from your initial gut feeling. So you're always supposed to narrow it down to two options. Then choose the best one. But before you choose that, reread what is the question asking and then so you can make the best decision. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, everyone. That does it for our episode on the NCLEX tips, t- tricks, yeah. and advice. Tips, tricks, and advice. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Code Blue podcast. Don't forget to download Holly Blue, the one and only nursing app for nurses created by nurses.